Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Blair. And I'm Kirsten, and we are a mediocre content. content. And welcome to another live stream. Boop, 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 boop. A December live stream. A December live stream. I'm pretty sure it was November the last time we did this. Oh, God. Or like the last day of November, to be fair. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Um, and also the, immediately when you said that I had the urge to like put up ornaments in here to make it more festive, but I clearly did not think of that ahead of time. No. <laughs> Maths. <laughs> I don't know how to math. I don't know how to math. I didn't come here to math, honestly. No. If I have to mm -hmm. math, I'm just going to leave. Um, that's a bit much for me. Yeah, we don't math here. Thank you very much. We're called mediocre content, not math. I don't know either. Um, also, the last <laughs> the last time we talked, it was about corn. If I it's corn. Correctly. Uh, this is probably also a good time to say that this is not only our first December live stream, but also <laughs> the last. Oh my God! Void. <laughs> <laughs> the void is here. <laughs> Can you even see the, all his ears? His little ears. Oh, oh and, and then here the comes other. Jinx. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're, we're having a cat-filled time over here. Already. Oh, and our music has just ended, and what I'm not going to do... Oh, my God. Is forget to turn on the <laughs> live stream. <laughs> I feel like uh, you guys might appreciate having some music this time, as opposed to awkward silence, as opposed to... just. I mean, weird. we could revel in the awkwardness. We are mediocre content, after all. I mean, we could. I feel like they got quite a lot of it last time. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Cats attack for sure, uh, especially over there. Lynx is asleep, so he's not going to be here anytime soon. Yeah. yeah. It's his it's his nine nine time. Salem's getting ready to take a nap, I think, on my little desk bed here. Uh, so. Yes. That's where cats sleep the best, all over your stuff. All over it. That's <laughs> correct. Uh, well, I'm excited for the holidays in terms of not being busy, which is wonderful. Uh, but you're going to be very busy. I mean, busy is a strong word, I feel. I feel like we're going to be on vacation, which is, like, not the Beautiful. same. Gorgeous. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. I'm very excited. Very excited. Oh, I'm going to be living in a Hallmark movie for about a week, and I'm excited <laughs> about it. I'm going to go to the, you know, whole small town. I'm just a girl from the city who's yeah. too obsessed with my work. Um, you're right. <laughs> you're so right except for the fact that like i already have the husband part of oh. the hallmark movie so oh. i'm not really sure like how this pans out for well, me. You, you're just gonna have to stage it with him you know you're just gonna okay have to, oh my gosh i i can't <laughs> go back to the big city life i i have to stay here with me. yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the way we're gonna spin it <laughs> okay great yeah. tell chris we gotta get on it okay we have things to okay do, expectations production to yes. Uphold. Yeah. And then yeah. I want to be there for the sequel. Um, and I'll be that busy friend who just tries to yank her back into the city. I don't even like the city, but I'll be the city <laughs> friend who tries to yank her back into the city. No, no, no. You could be. You could be my best friend I in the be. town <laughs> that I moved to. Ouch. <laughs> and then. <laughs> and then. Yes. You could. Be, and then I could help you find love from another guy who lives in the town in which we are having this Hallmark movie. I'll tell Tyler his role yeah. and expectations <laughs> in our sequel. Right. And uh. then somehow we have to rope the cats in. I'm not sure how <laughs> and exactly. Then, then we ran a community sanctuary. No, you can't be the evil fiance. 
because you're then, already married. You're first of all, you're already married. Second of all, Details. you can't be the evil fiance because we all know that the evil fiance always gets booted out and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. meets his terrible fate and loses yeah. to the hometown man who like sweeps <laughs> her off her feet and like is a lumberjack. I was gonna say it also never wears a shirt. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> He's always yeah. just in the woods, like unassumingly hot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Ridiculous. Exactly. With his pet reindeer or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Are we talking about Frozen or? No. Or no. We're Sven? not talking. <laughs> never. We would never talk about Is that. Is Kristoff Chris in this story? <laughs> Could be. Could Who be. knows? It's a mystery. I'm not going to tell. <laughs> Reindeer are better than people. Okay, uh, well, in that case, before we get any deeper, I say we should maybe disclaim. It's about to get weird. Yeah, it's about <laughs> to get weird. Um, okay, so obviously we are crazy and have no idea what we're talking about. We are Hallmark experts. Uh, Boom. yes, we are Hallmark. Oh. Rude. Oh my. We are Hallmark experts, but we are not experts on anything else. Please don't take any advice from us ever. I swear. No. Um, <clears throat> but I think we're learning about some fun things today, and we're gonna have some fights about candy corn. Gosh, so stay I tuned. So. And um, do your own research if you feel like you need to. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> What is happening? Chris getting called out. That's right. You better behave yourself. Don't be putting that in chat with mom here. <laughs> Any hoodle with that? What's mm. <laughs> uh. Hi, chicken mom. Thanks for entering the chat at the perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> and this time, we have the good news in a presentation because everybody loves the good powerpoint everyone does uh and this had pictures with it so i felt it was appropriate it is uh and festive what do you think of the rain years i this is a very cute little theme you have here thank it's you adorable it's gonna change drastically later but, but for now i think that's fine <laughs> get out of here don't talk to mom like that <laughs> everyone needs variety yes um, okay, Blair, take it away. Um, yes, so hold on one moment. I need yeah. to make sure I can read the slide. It is in small font. Um, <laughs> you want me to, I can make it bigger? Uh, no, I can make it bigger. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. Abby, welcome in, friend. Hi, hi. I'm like actually on the Canva because. Yeah, no, that's fair. Things. Okay. Huh. So here we are. The tiny golden mole, a hundred years to rediscovery. The little species of golden mole has been rediscovered in South Africa. Amazing. Thanks to an intrepid band of conservationists and a sniffing dog. Believe it or not, we can blame dogs for this. Woo! Uh, De Winston's golden mole was last scientifically documented in South Africa, in Port Nolith. Uh, in 1936, there were no photography. There was no photographs taken of this tiny blind mammal. Oh, it's blind. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. It's a mole, yeah. And little information existed about its behavior. Furthermore, without any physical specimen to examine, it was impossible to train a sniffing dog to find these little creatures. Um, <clears throat> and they, because they bury under the sand and navigate by detecting vibrations typical for most moles, from what I understand. Yes, yes, yes. Um, thinking that maybe De Winston's mole smells the same as another of the 21 golden mole species. The team led by a program manager, Kobus Theron from South Africa's Endangered Wildlife Trust uh, trained the, a border collie. Of course it was a border of collie. Course. They're such overachievers. Absolutely. Uh, named Jesse, of course, mm -hmm. uh, to lay down on the ground when she smelled one of these other moles. So that's exciting. Good for Jesse. Look at his little face. <laughs> no eyes, but everything else, 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, you're right. There are literally no eyes because he doesn't need them. Well, why would you need them, you know? That's why wild. I can't with that. All right. <laughs> um, so when, what does their skull look like? Does there, there's no eye holes. I mean, it's I, just, I could look it up. It's just flat. <laughs> I need to know. Look it up. I'm going to read right, this. Okay. All right. 
Uh, another challenge lay in the habit of habitat of De Winston's golden mole sand dunes. After a certain number of hours, sand dunes will have moved um, and winds blow. Typical sand behavior uh, because <laughs> the moles only, <laughs> only burrow four <laughs> inches under the ground. Their tracks and dens are easily scrubbed away, which totally makes sense. The third challenge was how do you identify a D. Winston's golden mole without a historical sample, without a detailed description of how the species differs from their other golden moles, and without DNA? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. A great I would question. love to tell you. Um, also, I don't... Uh, why is it Dewin? Is it the guy who like discovered him? I, I think guess. So. I think. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the the idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fortune was on the side of Theron and his team for when they arrived. Ooh, cat. Uh, at at but <laughs> at Port Nolith for a twenty twenty two expedition. Puma, get it together. I know. Stop showing everybody your bum. Okay. Okay. We, we had an eye talk. It's not going good. It's not going great. Go ahead, go ahead. A rainstorm had frozen the tracks of the area's moles in time in the wet sand. Ironically, Jesse the Collie was completely uninterested in that scene, meaning that the tracks were made by a mole whose scent she didn't recognize. The team collected more than 100 samples from the sand to take back to the lab for eDNA, uh, short for environmental DNA analysis. Um, yeah. And I think on the next slide, we'll figure out what happens. Ba, 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 ba. He's adorable. <laughs> he is adorable, but still has no eyes, no eyes. which is really weird. Wait till you see um, the skull. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, my God. Okay. Ow. Oh, God. Oh. Puma, I still do not to... show your butt on live TV. Indecent. <laughs> <laughs> we need to blur it out. <laughs> Her claws are so sharp right now. It's oh like God. daggers in my shoulder. <sighs> I'm so glad you're happy though. Oh. All right. Anyway, she's so nice. Okay, <laughs> she is gonna become one with your shoulder now. She, oh um. God. Okay. So eDNA focuses specifically on the nuclear or mitochondria DNA animals leave behind as they move through their environment, including hair cells, skin cells, and scat. Poo! <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Blair said poo. No, I didn't! <laughs> um, what is that? Re rewild? supports the rediscovery of lost species through their innovative and wildly successful 25 most wanted list which highlights important species that are lost to science organizes expeditions to find them and funds conservation based on the publicity of the rediscoveries so far de winston's golden mole is 12th in the organization the organization has crossed off its list with the eDNA sequences, the team was able to co compare mitochondrial DNA to a specimen of a mole held at the Port Nolith Museum, and it was a match, Woo. believe it or not. It's been exciting to for me to make this discovery alongside a group of people that share with shared interest and vision for golden moles to raise awareness about, about their presence, about their plight, says Samantha Meinhart, a conservation geneticist, genetics researcher, at the Endangered Wildlife Trust. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. look at him. He's on his back. I'm hoping that it's just like a, he's on his back and not like a, this is a dead photo. <laughs> Did you post a corpse photo on here? I pray not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. Um. So let's see. <laughs> The only reason journalists and scientists can pronounce a sixth mass <clears throat> extinction is because many small and unseemingly unimportant species like the Dewinston Golden Mole are going extinct every year. Altogether, they paint a picture of, the, of a global diversity crisis. For that very reason, however, the rediscovery of this tiny mammal 
which many will never see, nor make an effort to, nor regret not seeing if they were extinct. Damn. I know, right? This article was, uh, is actually tremendous news because if the loss of dozens of small unknown species like it causes a crisis, the several dozens of them cause causes healthy ecosystems. The survival of the... the, Okay, I'm sorry, you you guys. My brain. Um, I think it's just fantastic that in 2023, we can rediscover species, says team leader Theron. Quote, all our stories, (laughs) all of our stories around conservation are doom and gloom. And here we have an opportunity to say that actually there are opportunities to make change. And he is quite adorable. He is. Prepare yeah. to have that notion dashed immediately, however. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, I would like Sorry, to say guys. that <laughs> it does have what you would expect it to have, kind of. And then you look at it a second time and you're like, okay, but where? Okay. Ta-da! Hold on, I can't see it yet. Take Hold on, time. everybody. I'm sorry. Like you can see where they. Oh no! <laughs> you can see where they should be. Oh my god! You can see where it could be, where it would be. However, it do not be. It, oh no! It just do not. So oh, um. Wow. I just wanted to make sure that you saw what I saw. So. You yeah, could... that is. Freaking terrifying. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. You're um, welcome. Yep. Enjoy. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for the good news. The good news is you never have to see that again. <laughs> Yay! Um, also, the other good news is... Oh my goodness. We're gonna talk food! Food. Food. Also, why is... Not corn, though. No, not corn. One second. I need to adjust this. I don't know okay. what happened here. I don't um, know either. Not corn. Not even close to corn, in fact. Sadly. Uh, there we go. Woo. All right. Today, we're going to talk about some really, um, we'll say, normal or famous holiday foods in this time frame. And I would like to also say that this time frame spans from really October through December and a little bit into January. So it's a wide range of potential foods that we're going to discuss. And we need your help tonight because we're playing a little game of yay or nay. When we talk about the food, we're going to give you a little bit of a history as well as what it contains. And then Precisely. you get to tell us yay or nay. Would you like exactly. it? Exactly. Uh, if mm-hmm. you haven't had it, would you try it? If you have had it, did you like it? And uh, that's how we're going to play this thing. Yes. Audience participation is mandatory. Mandatory. <laughs> Plus, this is literally the part Blair and I will fight. So. Yes, it is. Because we have. And self-plug shamelessly. If you haven't listened to our holiday special last year, the one of the very first ones that we did, highly recommend. Because we, uh, we got in the box So. Again. Yeah, it was the October, it was the Halloween episode last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was like a lifetime ago and also a lifetime long, so enjoy. Indeed. All right, let's kick it off with a famous one, shall we? We're talking ye old figgy pudding. Um, and I will go ahead and say I've never had it, so. Neither have I. Let's describe it, shall we? As the classic Christmas song, We Wish You a Merry Christmas says, bring us some figgy pudding. We know the song, but many on this side of the pond don't know what figgy pudding is, let alone why it is included in one of our favorite holiday songs. Figgy pudding, also known as plum or Christmas pudding, is a British Christmas tradition. Brits, let us know if that's accurate still. It is not a pudding in the American sense, but a steamed cake filled with Mm -hmm. dried fruit and alcohol, which the second part sounds delicious. What I have learned from the Great British Baking Show is mm. that a pudding over there is literally a steamed cake. And There's that a... sounds nice. <laughs> it does sound nice. I would also like to steam the cakes. Yes. You know, they feel nice. Steaming cake. 
Uh, to make matters slightly more confusing, it does not necessarily contain figs or plums, instead getting its name from the Victorian use of the term plum to mean just dried fruit, generally. Oh, so like, um, <laughs> fruitcake. Yeah. Sounds like fruit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sounds like a right. fruit cake. Sounds I agree. like fruit lava cake to me. <laughs> it could. Yeah. yeah. Plum pudding dates back to at least the 1400s, and back then, sweet meat pies and pottages, pottages, okay, were used as a way of preserving meat. With a healthy dose of both sugar and alcohol, they were naturally used for preservation and became a staple celebration food. Over time, meat was dropped from the equation in favor of dried fruit. I agree, that was probably the better option. I would say. But the uh, by the 1800s, celebration puddings took on their traditional round shape and were associated with Christmas, showing up in Victorian Christmas portraits and in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, and taking on the moniker Christmas Pudding. Traditional recipes now include 13 ingredients, representing Jesus and the 12 apostles, and are decorated with a sprig of holly for the crown of thorns. So, what do we think? Figgy pudding, yay or nay? Um, I would say mid. I know oh. that's not an option, but yeah. I would say mid. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it, but I would definitely want to try it. I mean, it sounds like it gets a facial right before you eat it, so that would be nice. Maybe you could get a facial also with the figgy pudding. Yeah, I would try it. I, I'd give it a good old college try, I think. Sure. You know, yeah. It's got alcohol in it. Yeah, that's fair. And that's what fancy restaurants use in their food and desserts, so maybe they're onto something. No. Yeah. I'd try it. Probably Same. rum. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is probably rum. Probably rum. It didn't explicitly say, did it? it I don't know what the is horses that mean. Four horse emojis? <laughs> it says the four horsemen are here. <laughs> Bring us the figgy pudding. <laughs> Good to see you, Chris. So I would say nay, actually, because he says nay because of the horses. <laughs> I get it now. Nice job. Nice try. I'd try it once. Yeah, exactly. I'd try it once. Yeah, same. Yeah. Chris says nay <laughs> four times. <laughs> nay, nay, nay. Nay, 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 <laughs> nay. <laughs> Next time we speak on the phone, Chris, I'm going to need you to say nay, 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 nay. Because nay, nay, hear, nay. I got to hear it in your voice. <laughs> he's like they got it <laughs> all right moving right along we've got the gingerbread ba -ba -ba -boom. Ba -ba -ba -ba. what christmas would be complete without <clears throat> gingerbread cookies the history of gingerbread dates back to 2400 bc which i was not expecting that's old tis um, when the first recipe for gingerbread was recorded in Greece, ginger is a root from China that became widely traded around the world. Chinese recipes for gingerbread can be found dating back to the 10th century, but by the 11th century, cakes with similar ingredients to modern day gingerbread were being made in Europe per Martha Stewart. Apparently, she's the one that gathered that information. I highly doubt that. Yeah, she was there. Uh, which explains a lot. Anyway, <laughs> over time, a hard cookie version became popular in Europe and was widely available at fairs. Queen Elizabeth uh, I liked the gingerbread cookies and is cited as the person who started the tradition of decorating the cookies to look like people. It is thought that gingerbread cookies for Christmas may have first started as a way to symbolize baby Jesus, and gingerbread houses began appearing in Germany in the 16th century, but became more popular due to the Grimm's retelling of the Hansel and Gretel fairy tale, which features a gingerbread house. And the children get eaten. Spoiler alert. The house Wow. Became... Thanks so much. <laughs> the story's been out forever. If you don't know, oh, I don't know how to help God. you. God. <laughs> I feel attacked. The house... So do they. The houses <laughs> then became a popular Christmas decoration for the German immigrant population in Pennsylvania. Cute. So yay or nay i actually don't love gingerbread i have had it um but i i don't think we've made ginger have we made gingerbread houses i don't know so i have a hot take well it probably isn't a hot take actually <laughs> yay. Um, <clears throat> yay. so i feel like you know the gingerbread house like making kits where the yeah. gingerbread comes pre-made yeah 
that stuff is nasty. Oh, is it? I, I think if you home make your, not that I've ever done this, but I've, I have a theory because I've had like gingerbread cookies and stuff like that, you know? If you home make your gingerbread I and make it into a house, which is a lot of work, yeah. obviously, yeah. I feel like it would taste much better. I don't pr particularly like the pre-made stuff though. It's Can like I hot take thing. your hot take? Sure. I don't think the pre-made stuff is made to eat. I think you're just made to display it. I think really? that's why it tastes like absolute butts. What? I think because think about it, right? Any time I've seen the videos of kids making it or like families making it, they make mm -hmm. it and then I never see anyone eat it. I mean, it is edible though. It has sure. the ingredients and everything, sure. but it's like sure. not good. <laughs> sure. But I I think its main purpose is it's for display. It's just to decorate it, yeah. All right. Yeah. That's fair. But That's I would fair. agree, you're probably right. It probably tastes better if you just make it yourself if you are intending to yeah. eat it. Yeah. yeah. Mom says yay. Chris says nah. <gasps> Thanks. It's not yet, though. <laughs> yep, gotta Soon. make your own. Yes. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> gotta say it like that, though. Soon. Soon. <laughs> Wait, is this, this year's your 30th, right? Yes. Soon. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On Sunday, I'll officially big 3-0 for me. Old. Old. But Tyler was old before <laughs> I was. <laughs> okay, Chris is the oldest. He... No, that's true. You all fart. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he turned 30 in February. Old. <laughs> it reminds me of the SpongeBob movie where he goes, bald. 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 <laughs> like old instead. Old. <laughs> I call Tyler and Old Maid all the time. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so shoot, buddy, you are. Uh, <laughs> Chris, don't be mean to Chris. Ah, uh, Chrisception. It's true. It's true. Chrisception. <laughs> Too many. Uh, Too many, and they're all spelled the same. They are all spelled uh, the same. Uh, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Got real confusing. <laughs> Oh, man. Y'all need to slow down your chat so I can figure out which one you are. True. Ahem. Anyway. <laughs> On to the next. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I love that meme so much. It's such a good one. It applies to a lot of things. It really does. It will hold its stand for, like, the rest of time, I feel, in the meme world. It will. Like, it will. Very well. A thousand percent, yes. <sighs> okay. Next. Yield eggnog. Would you like to go over this one? Sure. Okay. Um, Christmas <laughs> beverages <laughs> can be found worldwide from Puerto Rican coconut-based coquito, which actually um, Chris's parents make. And oh. I have not tried it, but apparently it's good. Um, it's not like my vibe. Um, to egg and milk-based eggnog. Um, the origins of eggnog are unclear. However, early medieval Britain, of course, had what is thought to be a precursor to the drink <laughs> with an eggnog-like drink called posset, which was warm milk and ale. Ugh. Uh, eggs and milk were considered <laughs> rich people's food. Same. It has not changed. <laughs> and may have been enjoyed. Have you seen the price of eggs recently, though? Yeah, they're very expensive. Why are... You're fine. Why... Oh, my God. They are very expensive. I'm going to continue. Ignore um, chat for now. And may have been enjoyed in the winter by the wealthy British. The name, too, is under debate. The egg part comes from one of the primary ingredients, but the nog would refer <laughs> to anything from grog, an alcoholic beverage, or noggin, a wooden cup. Either way, by the 1700s, colonizers brought warm drinks to America because they didn't have warm drinks before, apparently, apparently. and <laughs> began adding alcohol to them, typically rum, obviously, uh, which was readily available. The drink evolved from a general wintertime drink to a specifically Christmas drink. I see you over there in the comments. You need to calm down. Um <laughs> And by the 1800s, eggnog became responsible for starting a drunken Christmas riot at West Point <laughs> University. Wow! Yeah. 
They're getting wild over there. Yeah. Per the Smithsonian Magazine, so you know it's hap- it's real. Absolutely. Um, by the mid 1960s, non-alcoholic eggnog came on the market because they couldn't think about that before. Nope. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and eggnog sales in America have only continued to ride over the rise over the past half century. Okay. So hot take. I hate eggnog. It's so too. gross. Tyler loves it, particularly the non-eggnog versions. However, I would also like to say, when you were talking about hot drinks, all I could think about was drink my hot, hot Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh! I love that video. Yeah, I have loved that video since my brother showed it to me many moons ago. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Nadir is the one that showed that to me for the first time. Oh my god. Oh, she breathed life so into good. me that day. <laughs> It was a uh, life, but we got so it. good. Anyway, no, I I cannot stand eggnog. Um, I is don't... that is that hot Kool Aid? Is that hot Kool Aid? Brother, uh, please drink please. my hot Kool Aid. I made, I it, made for it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gross. Hot Kool Aid uh, is gross, but also eggnog in general is gross. I mean, I... it's hot eggs and milk and alcohol. It's disgusting. Right? God. Can't we all be on the same page about that? <laughs> I don't like not. milk. I don't like I don't like co- eggs that are not cooked. Mm-mm. And I don't even really you like know, eggs. alcohol is fine on its own. Why do we need to add things to it? Why? Just it's fine the way that it is. Nope. Yeah. Um mom says yuck. I agree. Yeah, it's not for me. I can't. No. Mm-mm. Hard pass. Uh well, now that we cleared that out of the way, <laughs> we could just move on. Would you like to do guilt? Yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> it's like, is this yes. a real word? Yes. What is okay. I swear. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a nay in chat? <laughs> Shanay nay. All right. And nay. <laughs> I think I did it really Stop. good. Stop! You're making us look old to the young children who are not here because nobody watches us. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Nay. <laughs> Everybody in the chat that's born bef- on in or before the 90s, raise your hand. <laughs> and your hands go up and they stay there. <laughs> We're going to copy All right. straight so hard. <laughs> our own version so it's, it's fair. fine it's all the, right uh, the remix <laughs> all right gelt which <laughs> sounds incredibly jewish pelt um <laughs> gelt is chocolate coins made for hanukkah that's cute uh <laughs> traditionally <laughs> gelt that's is given cute. during the holiday and is often used for betting while playing dreidel wow mm. that's fun According to Reform Judaism, guilt is uh, reminiscent of the money distributed by the Maccabees after the Second Temple Temple's rededication. The designation when when I saw when I when I read the word Maccabee, all I could think about was Ross from Friends with the, with the uh, Hanukkah armadillo or what is what does he call himself? I have never watched Friends. Uh, of course you haven't. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, anybody? Yeah, I, I something friends. armadillo. I don't know. Anyway, all right. Um, anyway, the the design is meant to replicate the Jewish coins minted during the time of the Maccabees. Money in general has been associated with the holiday for centuries. Originally, real coins were given to religious school teachers and evenly and eventually to the children. Hmm. They were used as a way to teach children about giving. In the 1920s, despite being a minor Jewish holiday, Hanukkah began to gain popularity. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, it was seen as a winter holiday counterpart to Christmas in its commercialized potential. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like we've seen that pretty pretty much now. (laughs) Yeah. As a result, candy companies started making chocolate Maccabee soldiers, latkes, and coins. While the first two did not take off, gelt has been part of the American Hanukkah tradition ever since. And I enjoy chocolate coins as well. They don't have Hanukkah Same. character stamps. I feel like them, I but... see, I was going to say, I feel like I see chocolate coins more around like uh, Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. yeah. We gave them out one year. And during um, St. Patrick's Day. For America yeah. anyway. Yeah. 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 
Um, all the same, 10 out of 10 for Gelt. I love a good chocolate coin. Yeah, I mean, same. Are they the I best quality chocolate? No. Well, I don't know if these ones are specifically, are like different, you know. Fair, fair. I guess we would have to seek out real Gelt. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Who's going to yeah. turn down chocolate? I mean, I guess nobody are allergic to it, but still. <laughs> I'm not even a chocolate person. I don't know if I would turn it down. No. Mm -mm. Yay. I think that's pretty good. I think so, too. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hanukkah right now. It is. <laughs> it is. Um. So the next one that we have is Sukhut. Genyut. You can take that one if you want. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Very let me, well. Let me limber up. <laughs> we do some vocal exercises. <laughs> Mama made me mash my m and <laughs> Yellow leather, red leather. <laughs> oh my god. All right. oh, yeah. It doesn't get much better than donuts for the holidays. <laughs> I'm glad that that was the first sentence. Wow! Oh, gee whiz! Gee willikers! Quip, <laughs> welcome in! <laughs> You've come at a great what? time, my friends. <laughs> great question. I would love to tell you. We're playing yay or nay. Join on in, friend. Uh, I'm talking about donuts. All right. From Polish... <laughs> from Polish Pazki... For Fat Tuesday, sure, to Berliners for New Year's in Germany, to the classic Hanukkah Sufganyut. <laughs> <laughs> I think I nailed it. A jelly filled donut. I think you did too. <laughs> <laughs> Donuts basically rule as holiday treats and outside of the holidays, in my opinion. <laughs> what starts with F and ends with F but has no F? Uh, my reading of Sufganyut. <laughs> Full Fs. But you may be wondering how they became associated with the holidays. I'm sure that was your first question. Yes. A photograph. Ah, very clever, very clever. Uh, for Sufganyut, donuts are a natural extension of the Hanukkah story. As part of the celebration of the rededication of the Second Temple, thanks to the Maccabees, which we've already discussed briefly, Hanukkah celebrates the miracle of the oil used to light the menorah. While the oil should have only lasted one night, it lasted eight nights. Oil is an integral part of the Hanukkah story. However, as Time Magazine points out, somewhere, donuts were not part of the diet at the time of Hanukkah. Obviously. <laughs> Instead, the tradition of donuts started with North African Jews who ate fried dough balls for the holiday. Thank nice. you, North African Jews. You have provided us this luxurious treat that we now all enjoy. Centuries later in Europe, the sugar trade allowed the fried dough to transform from a savory treat filled with meat to a sweet one filled with jam. And when Jews fled to Israel to escape the anti-Semitism, both African and European groups brought donut love with them. However, what sealed the deal for Sufganyut was the Histadrut a trade group trying to create skilled jobs in the area. Since jelly donuts are more challenging to make at home than other Hanukkah foods, they promoted them to create jobs, and it was incredibly successful, and now it's part of the Hanukkah tradition. Wow. So, yay for me, it's a jelly donut. <laughs> wow. Why did you yeet, Blair? <laughs> yeah. When do we get to the beer? There, there's no, no, that's not a food. <laughs> Yay for me. I actually don't like jelly. 76 pills, miles? You could walk Rude. that. You could Shut up. Just walk that off. Just walk what? it off. Just walk it off. It's fine. You've got it. Yeah, you've got this. I'm saying yay to the donut, but I don't like jelly-filled donuts. Yeah, same. I was just about to say that. Also, that's Suf two for two for Hanukkah, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Sufganyut. See, I did pretty good. You did great. I did good? Yeah. Nay for donuts, Quip? What the heck? Donuts, Quip. Ooh, can I do latkes? <laughs> Is that what's next? <laughs> I love latkes. <laughs> yes. Chris doesn't like donuts. They don't make... Nah, it's not Krispy Kreme donuts. 
All right. Anyway. <laughs> sure, you could do latkes. Uh, <laughs> so opinionated in here. <laughs> the pe the people we have in this chat right now. Also, um, Chris, you can't say hell nah. You have to use nay moving forward since that's how you started. That's right. Yot. Be consistent. Oh, yot like yat. Wait, hold on. Pause. Sufgan yat. Ah, like yat. Sufgan like yat. 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 Latkes Got are it. yummy. Aren't they potatoes? Latkes are, yes. That's yeah. why I love them. Mm. Latkes are the best. <clears throat> okay. Potatoes are amazing, as we have well established so far. Uh, and fried potatoes are near perfection. Luckily, at Hanukkah, that's three three for three for Hanukkah, three for honestly. Three. Uh, fried potatoes are a quintessential part of the holiday festivities. However, these pancakes didn't start out as potatoes at all, but instead as cheese, which honestly, same, same. Yeah. Um, cheese enters the tale, according to Reform Judaism, as a way to symbolize not the, not the story of Judah Maccabee, but that of judith uh judith protected her people by taking general holofernes uh for a picnic with cheese and wine eventually killing him wow oh. good for her oh my god um <laughs> i got dark <laughs> such a great life. holiday story <laughs> <laughs> some translations have her carrying cheese or cheese pancakes due to some tenuous connections between the two stories during the middle ages and uh, migration of Italian Jews bringing ricotta pancake recipes with them. Thank God for the Italians. Jeez. Um, 14th century Jews began celebrating the holiday with cheese pancakes. Potatoes were introduced in Europe in two, 200 years later, but it took until the 18th and 19th centuries for potatoes to replace cheese. According to uh, bustle this happened due to crop failures in poland and ukraine potatoes were pl planted instead and due to their ease and availability potato pancakes became traditional i don't understand why we've separated the potato and cheese i'm gonna be honest with you this i think we should combo. just combine them yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this been a and that's and that's on america that is, honestly honestly that is on america we yeah. had the tools the technologies yeah um well, and we are the melting pot, in which yes, case we could bring the cheese and the potato together yes. into one glorious Hanukkah dish. Oh, and we're not even Jewish. <laughs> not even Jewish. But I'd do it. I feel like I could be, they should, they would mm -hmm. accept us if we brought this to them, I bet. For sure. Maybe. Maybe confused, but definitely accepting. I think so. Quip, nay for potatoes also? What do you eat, Quip? <laughs> Yay! With applesauce and sour cream. The applesauce is confusing. The sour cream is accepted. I would try the applesauce with it, though. I don't really like applesauce. The texture is awful. The texture is awful, but with the fried potato, though. Anything with is possible. the fried potato? Because it's, potato? like, crunchy. Uh, okay, sweet potato works. You could do sweet potato latkes, surely. You could. I think it's probably sacrilegious, though. Meh. Chris says, yeah. <laughs> Both, yeah. Great. Made with potatoes and onions. Oh, now you've just taken me to Waffle House. <laughs> Waffle House? Scattered, smothered, and covered. <laughs> Moving right along. Mm -hmm. Let's talk pumpkin pie. <laughs> Which I feel like we've kind of already talked about this season, so it's great. Uh, yeah. A whopping 87% of all pie consumed in the United States is consumed between Thanksgiving and Christmas, with nearly half of all pie consumed during the year being eaten on Thanksgiving, which obviously should come as no surprise. Yeah. Mm. With those numbers, it is not surprise. Whoa, I thought it was a surprise. I just said it was a surprise. Are you making me a liar? It's not a surprise. <laughs> that, no. <laughs> that pumpkin pie has become so synonymous with Thanksgiving, but it begs the question... Why pumpkin? I also loathe Waffle House, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but you know where they have them? Everywhere else but here. <laughs> so, my future is sealed. Pumpkins originated in Central... Wait, hold on. I think we need the story of why you hate Waffle House so much. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> oh, God! It all 
all started on a road trip to Myrtle Beach, or maybe it was from to, I think it was to Myrtle Beach. Mom, tell me if I'm a liar. This is, this is the story of how I grew to hate ye old Waffle House. It's not even that great. It was on the way to, so I would like to preface this with the story. Story that, time. That I did the flag color guard with the rifles and stuff. And mm -hmm. during the summer, we were part of band camp, but I was not a band member. I was a color guard member. Okay. Doesn't matter. The bottom line is we were, we did this for weeks and four weeks. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Four weeks. <laughs> I said trick. I'm so glad that you're here also. This is great. I'm so glad that this is what I talk about, like my personal life on this channel, but on my other channel, you guys don't really hear this and I really wouldn't tell this. <laughs> Unless I'm, I'm asked. I'm so excited. By someone else who's also been with me on vacation, Blair. I have, yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, doesn't matter. Okay. So I was in band camp. Go ahead, whatever, laugh it off. The bottom line is prior to this vacation, the entire summer, I was living off of pretzels, peanut butter, and water. Okay? Because it was so hot and you couldn't really get a lot down. You were already dehydrated. It was a very long summer. And then exactly after it was over, I mean, almost to the T, we were headed to Myrtle Beach, okay? Okay. So I was dehydrated. I was full of peanut butter pretzels and dreams and exhausted. So we're okay. driving. Now, I have, que I have questions, but I'll wait till the end if you okay, want. Okay, okay. Okay. So we're driving there. And I think we stopped halfway. Maybe that's what it was. Or maybe we okay. just got there. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is that night we had Waffle House. And then I was fine. But the next okay. morning, guess where we ate again? Waffle House. Again. And okay. we did not even get 30 minutes down the road before I began getting the sad grumbly tumblies. Oh no. And I was like, I feel really sick. And I was like, mom, I'm going to be sick. And she's like, do you need to pull over? And I was like, we need to pull over. And so she pulls over and I'm just dry heaving on the side of the road. Oh no. <laughs> because I was so full of Waffle House after having nothing for like weeks. Oh. And then I had it double and we were in the road. I already get car sick. So I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> and the rest of the trip, I just felt so ill. Oh and my of God. course, I married the only man on the planet who would eat Waffle House breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, no, no questions asked. I was going to say, I, that's why. Okay, so that's why I was confused because I know Tyler loves Waffle House. Like and I'm like, how can you hate it? hate it so much i can tell you because i was on the side of the highway just, <laughs> just so ill that you know what that makes total sense <laughs> i yeah and mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> baby moose wants to know why you're not playing Luigi. this is not the channel for luigi 3 <laughs> okay so, so i sorry. i have another follow-up question then okay. um right. <laughs> why so at how first of all how long was band camp oh it was like mom correct me if i'm wrong it was like a month long okay she, yeah oh. I, <laughs> oh that's oh that's a problem because i see where i see where you went wrong now <laughs> well because i don't eat breakfast food and so anytime we go to waffle <sighs> house i cannot eat breakfast food i hate i hate eggs i'm not a pancake person unless my mom makes them specifically and so I was like, all I have as an option is a burger. Waffle? I don't like Plain waffles. waffle? I don't like- I, It's I literally don't, just bread. But I don't like sweets. It's sweet. Oh. You know? I, uh, Toast? Eh. Okay. Eh. Did you just tell me all I right. should do a salt lick? <laughs> <laughs> it could be all the right. channel for Luigi. <laughs> so we're not playing Luigi here. Okay. So first of all, where you went wrong obviously was ordering a burger and not uh, breakfast food. You said, what did you say? Band camp was how long? Like a month. 
a month and you were at home though right like you like yeah you weren't yeah, yeah, you were, I would, okay. yeah okay i would go home every night yeah it wasn't okay. like a staycation situation and you did eat when you were at home is that correct for the most part literally from sun up to sundown we were at the school okay okay for like a month so yes but not really okay because we were it was just yeah yeah it was like constant okay it was awful i only did it for one summer thank god i see oh i see a steak and cheese with triple hashies Ugh. Ugh. okay well i think i think your feelings are valid i, I personally so. i have had good experiences at waffle house is it my first choice no yeah I have since had good experiences at Waffle Houses. I mean, we make great friends. They know us on a first name basis, usually, wherever we land. Because of Tyler. Because of Tyler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a saltcation. It was a saltcation. I was very salty. Is meringue on the list? It is not, but we can talk about it. Um, okay, back to pumpkin pie, however. Um, why pumpkin was the original question. I think the world could use more wall. I think that's wrong. Um, pumpkins originated in Central America, and by the mid 1500s, squash was taken and grown in Europe, where it began to be used in cooking. While pumpkins were almost certainly around for the first Thanksgiving, they likely did not appear on the table as a modern day pumpkin pie. Over the years, pumpkin pie recipes have taken many forms, from a stewed pumpkin pie with almonds in 1650s France to yeah. a sliced. I know. To a sliced pumpkin pie mixed with savory herbs or dried fruit in the 1670s England. But finally, in 1796, American Cookery by Amelia Simmons published a recipe for pumpkin pie that greatly resembles the one on today's tables. After the recipe was published, pumpkin pie began to gain popularity during Thanksgiving and was included in the 1827 novel Northwood as part of Thanksgiving celebration. The pie has only grown in popularity, and it is hard to imagine the holidays without it. Uh, I like pumpkin pie, actually. I, <laughs> so, so, I like pumpkin pie. I think if I have more than one slice, it gets a little, like, baby foody, you know? Yeah, I can see A little that. mushy, you know? Thanks for being here, Chris. Bye. So long. I... Day for quip. I do like pumpkin pie if it has enough whipped cream on it. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what makes it. I would never. I, I'm not like um somebody who enjoys putting like almonds and walnuts and stuff in things. I don't really like nuts in. I have pastries. I have never seen that in a pumpkin pie before, not so that's new to pie. me. Yeah. No. Yeah. I've heard of just pecan pie, but I don't like that either. Yeah. Me neither. It's just something about, I don't, like when people put like, um, nuts in brownies, not a fan. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, a peanut butter cookie is fine. I don't know if I would like chunky peanuts in it though. No. No. I like oatmeal cookies. Yeah. Oatmeal cookies are okay. Yeah. Do I don't. Do they only come with nuts in it? Sometimes. Oh, really? Uh... Or raisins. Ugh, you can keep the raisins. <laughs> <laughs> raisins well, are good for you, Kirsten. Raisins are terrible, and they're an awful texture, and I don't like them. <laughs> it was 39 Celsius. What's that in Fahrenheit? Quit, Blair. Math it. Isn't it 12? No, thank you. Oh. <laughs> we established we don't do math here. <laughs> That's right, math. Take care, purple pumpkin pie, bat bat, weaving chicken corn mousse bread. Whoa! <laughs> you have to add nay to that because that's his new thing with a with a horse head. With a horse, yeah. Yes, spend too long in the bath and you will be a raisin. I do not like getting pruny either. I hate it when I can feel my hand prune in the shower. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't have that problem. Well, you're not taking long enough showers. <laughs> I. I'm taking a perfect amount of showers <laughs> slash staying hydrated so I don't get dehydrated pruny hands on the outside. Prune hands. Take your bottle with you. <laughs> slash I used to I used to swim for like millions of hours at a time. So that's true. Prune Blair. Her prune, prune Blair. Face. <laughs> mm hmm 
That's really hot, Quip. Ugh. All, All right. right. Would you like All to right. take the next one? Sure. Sun. I do enjoy candy canes. What's wrong with the baby? What's wrong? Are you stuck? All right, I'm going to get this going while Kirsten figures out what's going on with her cat. Um, Christmas would not be complete without the bicolored hook-shaped candy cane. But while these candies are now quintessential parts of the holiday, their history is marked by speculation. The most common theory of the candy cane's origin is that a choir master in the 1670s Germany gave all an all-white straight version out to his choir boys to keep them quiet during services. When the church complained, he he bent the original stick shape to represent a staff. Another myth is that the hook shape represents the letter J for Jesus. <laughs> um. <laughs> that would be upside down. <laughs> I do love candy canes. Uh, still, prude, prude. <laughs> a third says that the hook was added so that the candy could be used to decorate the Christmas tree. Oh, I like that. Uh, we may not know for sure. It is likely that the candy was German in origin. <clears throat> in 1874, I don't know if you guys saw that, but my cat just like zoomed across my desk. It's zooming. <laughs> it's uh, not to be. The automatic... The feeder just went off that's ah, why mm -hmm. um in 187 in 1847 there we go got it august i'm 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 guard i'm guard i'm guard uh a german immigrant to america decorated a christmas tree with the white candy canes which sparked their popularity in america in the 19th century the color red and peppermint flavor were both added to the mix creating a confection we know and love today Yay, candy canes. I like candy canes. I do too. I actually have some on my tree right now. I don't I don't go out of my way to get them. But if I was offered one, I would eat it. Cedric nice. May? You don't like do you like do you like peppermint in general? No cup. Hey, look at it. <laughs> do you remember in middle school when we would get the candy candy canes at school and we would like uh sharpen eat them, them but they would sharpen them and then like... <laughs> so we could pretend to shank each other yes <laughs> yes okay good we're on the same page america <laughs> america <laughs> gotta make sure i sharpen this candy cane in case i'm in a fight and um then you would inadvertently cut your tongue because the red would uh dissolve faster than the white candy in uh -huh, my case right and mm -hmm. you would go to like pull it out of your mouth and I would cut my tongue or lip every single time without Correct. fail. Yep. I also, I never really liked, I got, look, when it comes to candy canes, if it's not just straight peppermint, I'm not interested. Yeah, that's fair. Cause they, they came out with a flavors. ton of flavors. Yeah. yeah. I just can't be doing all that. I also saw that they have like hot sauce flavors now. Like you gotta be kidding me. Who's, who's putting that in their mouth long term? No one. Who is doing that? That's wild. Strong also, that's what stick. she said. <laughs> <laughs> who is putting that? In that? Who is putting? Who is putting that in their mouth long term? <laughs> no one. <laughs> Literally, no Literally one. Literally, no one. <laughs> oh, why is it weird? All right, this is the one we're going to fight on, though. Indeed. So this is a previous battle uh, Blair and I have waged. And it's just in good fun, but I would like to preface this with to say that my opinion's the only correct one. Candy corn is one derisive Halloween treat. Perhaps some of the unpleasant feelings towards the candy corn from come from the fact it wasn't initially created to taste good, but to look good and appeal to children, which it still does because it's it's still one of my favorites. According to history in the late 1800s, molded mallow cream candy was made and marketed to children. These candies were produced year-round as a way to utilize and showcase the then innovative technique of triple layering colors, George Renninger created candy corn. Originally, the candy was marketed as chicken feed, Sag, 
as Americans did not consider corn to be food for humans. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Mm -hmm. In the 20th century, candy corn was typically sold in bulk to children. While originally candy corn was found year-round as candy became more popular for Halloween in the 1950s, candy companies specifically advertised it as a Halloween candy. While it can still be found throughout the year, it remains most popular at the end of October. I like the candy corn and the pumpkins. It's amazing. Exactly, Mom. Because <laughs> I could easily access them. So anyway... Yuck. Oh my god, get out of here. <laughs> They're disgusting. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. They are absolutely nasty. I love them so much. <clears throat> they have a great texture. No. It's wonderful no. to chew, especially the pumpkins. No. Oh. Terrible texture, way too sweet, oh. incredibly terrible flavor. And you like me to eat a waffle. <laughs> That's okay, awful. but you're the texture lady, and this <laughs> is the texture that you like? It's solid. It's melty. It's soft. Uh, it's not crumbly or grainy. It's also you are the salty lady, and you <laughs> and you only, and you like this, which is like the sweetest of all the foods. I don't think it's that sweet. Oh, it is. I don't. It think like it's hurts that my sweet. mouth. Really? Mm -hmm. See, that's what waffles and pancakes do to me. With or without syrup? With or without. Oh, interesting. Too much. Hmm. Can't eat too many at a time. That's sacrilegious, Mom. But the texture you like is layered shitty corn. That's what I'm saying, Centric. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's, so it's not even real corn, oh, first of all. You know what else Second I Second like of all, do? the coloring is just, like, not great. I really and... enjoy trying to bite each color so sharply as well. No. That no. it, it's clearly cuts through the color. It's, it's like the texture of a crayon. It's like you're eating a crayon. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah. How, how many crayons have you eaten? <laughs> Absolutely zero. So where's your reference? <laughs> I have broken them in half, and it feels the same when you break a candy corn in half. I feel like eating a crown is a little different than breaking a crown. <laughs> You have a lot of explaining to do, Blair. Also crown, not crayon. Get out of here. <laughs> Get out. I'm surprised you didn't say nothing about my all earlier. <laughs> I was holding back, but now it's all guns blazing. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Crayola glue's better indeed. That's what I'm saying. That's Disgusting. what I'm saying. <laughs> Centric has my back. He knows. I would like to say for anyone who's viewing this after the fact, we are not condoning that you eat crowns and glue. <laughs> I would just like to go out we are on not. and say that. I think that's reasonable, but they also know not to take any advice from us. So for, they would be dumb if they decided the to do that. We do the disclaimer for a reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. Well, it was fun fighting about this for the second time. Always a joy. Always a pleasure. Um, so sorry you don't like fun things. Uh, anyway, ah! <laughs> how about we move on to another fun thing? <laughs> Fine, you read it then. <laughs> it's king cake. Are you sure you don't want it? No, I don't want it. Okay. Just like candy corn. I don't want it. <laughs> really missing out. Art class was second period lunch in second grade. <laughs> That's disgusting, Cedric, but good for you. <laughs> so happy about your decisions. <laughs> Um, all right. King cake. So I would also, again, this kind of spans a little bit. So this is something that has spanned into like the January time frame. This is just one of those things. Uh, king cake, which can also be called Twelfth Night Cake, is used to celebrate Mardi Gras and is most prevalent in New Orleans, Louisiana. According to the Southern Food and Beverage Museum, which I didn't know existed and now I want to go to. Uh, Same. Precursors to the cake can be found as early as medieval Europe when sweets were eaten on Epiphany through Mardi Gras. The day could also be called King's Day. King cake became a New Orleans tradition to January 6th, 1870. A group known as the Twelfth Night Revelers paraded through the town. They served fake cakes, each of which contained a bean. Whoever found the golden bean was crowned queen. 
The tradition spread and real cakes began to be used with either a bean or a small plastic or porcelain baby inside, so have fun choking on that. King cakes are traditionally cinnamon yeast cakes decorated with three colors, symbolizing the three wise men, as well as purple for justice, green for faith, and gold for power. And that's a king cake. I've had this. It's okay. It's good. I like yeah. it. Um, I didn't um, choke on a baby, which is No, great. me neither. <laughs> me neither. Horrifying. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Mom. <clears throat> Um, I think we had this weirdly enough when I was in French class in high school. Yeah, I think we had it for school one time yeah. in Catholic school. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they used, um, peas. I don't know if it was king cake now that I'm thinking about it, though. I think it was a cookie. Mm, sounds not like king cake. And if you had a pea in your cookie, never mind, it's not the same thing. But, um... Similar, but S different. Still didn't choke on a baby, though. That's always good. Yeah. If I could avoid that, I'm, d I'm going to. You're doing great. Mm. So, yeah. All, all right. right. It's not my favorite. Moving right along. Woo! Um, Lunar New Year dumplings. Ooh, this sounds good. I'm excited. I know, right? Uh, also I love... Savory. First of all, I love dumplings <laughs> so, so, so much. So much. <laughs> So much. And we found this beautiful dumpling and like bao bun place in San Francisco. Mm. And I think about it at least once a week. Oh, I'm so, oh, they once are. Once a week. So and we good. haven't, we need to go there before we leave again because, like, oh so my good. God, it's so good. And they like, you see all the women like making them in the back. And it's just like, oh, it's the best. They're so good. With the They're place so that good. we go to, they have like a, a ramen shop near us. And uh -huh. their pork belly buns are so soft. And mm -hmm. so fluffy. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I know. Okay. All right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the, the connections between dumplings and Lunar New Year date back to the, about, back 1800 years during the Han Dynasty. The legend tells us of a doctor named Zhang Zongying. Zongying? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, who was treating an epidemic of frostbite on the villagers' ears, creating a spiced meat dumpling and feeding them to the sick. The people recovered well. He is said to have handed them out between solstice and new year, which is why they're still eaten today as part of the celebration. There are many kinds of dumplings. The dumplings made from a new year are uh, Jiozi? Jiozi? Sure. Uh, which is which the BBC states means transitioning from old to new, which deepens its New Year's connection. China Educator Tour notes that the original name was Jiaoer, which is a reference to the ear like shape, whereas BBC says the name is Jiaozi, uh, references the shape of money in ancient China. Either way, dumplings are still eaten on Lunar New Year as a way to bring good luck in the coming year. I will never say no to a dumpling. I'm Same. Gonna be honest with you. <laughs> Same. A thousand percent. Full yay for me. In fact, triple yay. Yeah. That's, same. Um, same. Same. And I've heard, yeah, yay, yeah. See, I've also heard that like um, red bean dumplings or red bean buns are supposed to be really good. I've tried red bean other stuff, yeah. and I'm not. 100% sure I'm on board with the flavor. Oh, what's it like? But I, it's kind of, it's like a, it's not, it's more of a savory mm. than a sweet, oh, which I was I expecting like more of a sweet than a savory. So maybe I just need to go into it again with different expectations. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Red paste beans. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to yeah. try it. I feel like it'd be good. Yeah. Plus there's beans. <laughs> Um, so any foods that we didn't mention that you really like for the holidays? Anything specific? I mean, sugar cookies. Oh, I make really cookies. good sugar cookies, if I do say so myself. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm like a good, a big, like holiday cookie person. Mm. Um, I like anything peppermint, really. Mm. I'm a, I'm on board with that. That's right. Quip did say meringue. I, I'm not a fan of meringue, but I'm not a sweet person anyway. So, yeah, 
I watched them make meringue on Great British Baking Show, and it looks like fun. I've always wanted to do it. I'm sure it is fun. Yeah, it's like marshmallowy kind of. Ooh, I don't know about that. Well, I guess there's two different kinds. There's like Swiss meringue and then like regular meringue. And one of them is like a hard, like, um, and chewy in the middle. And then one of them is like a meringue that you put on top of like a pie. Mom. Which is more like liquidy, right? Resident Baker, give me the meringue types. Let's roll the clip. I don't know. <laughs> Um, is that what the little like green and pink and white uh -huh. cookies mm -hmm. are? Oh, they're not that's... cookies. Well, they you can make cookies in those shapes, so oh. I don't know. Oh. But like traditionally, meringues are in that sh that exact mm -hmm. shape you're talking they're about. Like, like the little dollops of sort. uh huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, but then there's also uh macarons or macaroons. Yeah, which yeah. are like that as well. Oh. You know, like the coconut ones with like the Ugh. chocolate on the bottom. Yeah, I know. I know. That's another thing I hate is coconut. I understand. Mm. I understand. Wish I could you don't like nice. Shirt. You don't like good things. Oh my god! <laughs> Savage. All right, meringue. Can't spell meringue types. French, Swiss, and Italian. Soft, firm, stiff, overbeaten. This is aggressive. Hold on. <laughs> please hold. Please hold. <laughs> you don't like coconuts? Are you? I don't just eat coconuts. That's so what I'm saying. Oh, empanadas. Mm. Oh, I do love it. There was a lady uh, that lived in our neighborhood. Her mom came to live with them for a while, and they put up these posters for homemade empanadas. Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> they were the most heavenly thing I've eaten. Mm -hmm. They were so good. Type of meringue cookies. Yeah, you're right. That's probably a better thing to say. Type of meringue cookies. Oh, wow. It just gave me 19 easy recipes. This is what I'm talking about, though. I'll just pop this in here. Like, these little things... These little dollop things, this is what I think about when you were talking about what they looked like. like so that is what meringue looks like when it's piped and like uh, hard on uh, the outside and chewy on the inside. That, I think those pink ones that you just put up, I think those are actual meringue. Ah. But then there's Swiss meringue, which is different. Okay. Yeah, these just say classic meringue cookies or, or yeah i guess i don't know they're colorful yeah pretty ah okay these are this is what you made mom okay yeah yeah okay swiss, swiss, swiss yeah it's for frosting there we go okay, yeah. Right. yeah 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 sure 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 okay oh they're so pretty i honestly i would want these just to decorate they're so pretty <laughs> i'm gonna make yeah them. they're so pretty oh look at the trees so cute. Joy hard and frosty. Anyway. Italian too? Yeah. Well, yeah, because mm -hmm. it said like, uh, you know, uh, French, Italian, and I don't know, something else. Yeah. Something important. I, I don't know. There are many kinds of meringue. There are many kinds. It sounds As like... we have learned today on Mediocre Content Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with that knowledge, I'm going to start our outro movie. <laughs> Sweet. Learned to make them when I was taking a pastry school. That's amazing. I feel like a lot of things were baking in pastry school. And all of us benefited from that. And I love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. I'm never going to complain. Um, thanks for joining us, guys. Yes. Uh, we will see you on stream in january we're not gonna have yes. one in the next couple weeks because it's holiday stuff you know people because we've got too much going on <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too much for the holidays so we will not be here in two weeks we will be here i think it's january 4th I don't know. yeah 
So about a month. Yeah. -ish. We put out an announcement um, in our yeah. Discord. So if you are following our Discord, that's fine because I don't usually post there, but I do plan to. Um, and we'll just keep you updated. Anything else from you? Buddy? Yeah. Keep an eye on the Instagram as well. Yeah. I'll oh, be yes. posting there frequently. Um, about our like regular pod, but then also just like maybe a little schedule too. Yeah. Yeah. So keep an eye on that. I think it's easier to do that than assume people know how to count because we don't do math. So no, no, we do not. All right. So uh, feel free to send us an email with any question, comments, concerns, mostly concerns or ep or episode topic suggestions. Wow. At <laughs> mediocre content podcast at gmail.com. Send us a tweet at Mediocre Squawks or follow us on Instagram at Mediocre Content Podcast. Rate us five stars. Listen here, Centric. He said Salston. <laughs> so rude. Love you, man. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, Chicken Mom. Um, and, you know, listen to our podcast. Rate us five stars for Christmas. Yay. Yes. Holiday stars. Or Hanukkah. We'll take it for Hanukkah too, either way. Yeah. Um, and we will see you in January, in the new year, if you will. Happy New Year. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>